Hey, everybody. Uncle Rich here for Who's Telling the Truth. Today is uh, it's show 43, and today is March 24th. Today's show is going to be, let's see if we can get this in there a little bit. There we go. It's going to be on Ivanpah. And a lot of people really don't know what Ivanpah is, so we're going to show you today. And I tell you, it's solar power at its best. But guys, I had a revelation this week. And, you know, I always love to give Uncle Joe, our good buddy Uncle Joe, to business, you know, our conservative friend who, uh, who um, I don't know, it, it always seems to me that for some reason Uncle Joe hates Obama. And, you know, I, I just can't understand why Uncle Joe hates Obama so much. I mean, I don't know. At first... I, at first, I thought the reason why he hated Obama was because Obama wanted equal pay for women. So I said, okay, maybe he's got something against women. You know, women only make on the average of 77% of what men make. So I figured, you know, maybe Joe is against equal pay, you know, because he's a capitalist. Why should women make the same amount of money as men? I mean, we all know women aren't equal to men, so why pay them the same? So I'm sure, you know, that, that, you know, I thought maybe that's the reason why Joe, Joe hated Obama. But I said, well, you know, maybe it's, it's, it's the fact that Obama wants people to have a minimum wage and a living wage. And I said, maybe Joe hates Obama because Obama wants everybody to be treated fairly and to be paid for, you know, a living wage, to do the right thing. So I said, well, maybe Joe hates Obama because of that. And then I said, well, no, maybe this, uh, and then I said, you know what? Maybe Uncle Joe hates Obama because of overtime. Obama wants everybody that works overtime to get paid overtime. Can you imagine that? Paying people for doing what they, paying them for overtime. Can you imagine that? Being fair and square with people? So I figured maybe, maybe that's why Joe hates Obama. But you know what, guys? I think I really found the true reason why Uncle Joe and his Republican conservative friends hate Obama. And to simply put it, the best way to see what I'm talking about is we're going to show you a little clip from South Park, and it's about Wheel of Fortune. And the question that they're looking for is people who annoy you, people that you would hate when they annoy you. So, John, let's see what type of people would annoy Uncle Joe. Hit it. And oh, please. Okay, well, looks like you're going to get a lot of help here. Category is people who annoy you. Audience, keep quiet, please. Uh, well, uh. Ten seconds, Mr. Marsh. Well, I know it, but I don't think I should say it. Five seconds, Mr. Marsh. Uh, all right, I'd like to solve the puzzle. Niggers! Uh. Huh? Guys, I had to do it. <laughs> so as you can see, Uncle Joe hates naggers. <laughs> People that, are anno that, that annoy him like Obama. So now we know why Uncle Joe hates Obama, because he hates naggers. All right, now, guy, guys, on tonight's show, Joe, I love you, kid. I had to get it in, though. I had to get it in. And thanks, William, for alerting me to the clip. Hey, and if anybody else has got any other stuff they'd like to see on the show, you know, uh, um, I'm trying to, to integrate my Facebook page with the website, and I can really use some help. So if there's anybody out there that really has their act together, 
when it comes to social media, if they could help me. I mean, I'd really appreciate it. So anyway, getting back to tonight's show, uh, we're going to start off, we're going to tell you about um, Ivanpah. But before we tell you about uh, Ivanpah, we're going we're gonna to do a clip from Bill Maher. And it's on words and the way we use words and how words are so important. And we're going to show you, you know, word usage and how the Republicans use words to trick the simple folk. That's right. But they're going to show you what it's going to take to invade the sun. That's right. We're going to have to have a war. We're going to have to go in there and invade the sun. But... That's what's going to lead us to show you about uh, Ivanpah, the world's largest solar plant just opened in California. And guys, when you see this, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to blow you away. But most importantly, a lot of the money that came to finance Ivanpah came from the same fund that the money to finance Solyndra came from. So all the people on Fox, right away, every time they talk about green energy and, and global, Solyndra, Solyndra. Solyndra is the Benghazi of, of solar energy. Solyndra. Yeah, well, you know what? When you're dealing with new technology, some stuff works, some doesn't. And you're going to see technology tonight that not only works, but blows you away. And then we're going to take it a step further and we're going we're gonna to show you, we're going to give Fox the old bada bing, because after we show you exactly what works, we're going to show you Fox denying that it works. Anything sustainable they can't deal with. Why? Because the Koch brothers don't want it. And let's be honest with each other, who owns Fox? And everybody that works at Fox, you got the 1% the and the Koch brothers. And they just want to spread the hate and, 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 and create doubt. So we're going to show you the, the uh, world's largest plant. And then we're going to show you that a lot of the plant was, was constructed by union labor. Ho, oh, ho, union labor. Oh, oh, my. You mean those moochers and those takers? Those guys? Wait, when you see, when you see with the, the construction of this stuff, you're going to be blown away. And then you're going to see some game-changing solutions. I tell you, when you guys actually see what's going on with a lot of the uh, NFL stadiums, you're going to, you're going to with, with the solar activity and how they're generating electricity, and then right after that, we're going to show you how Fox says solar, solar panels don't work. I mean, after they spent millions of dollars Putting them on all, Fox is going to deny it again. Why? Because they have to. Because anything sustainable and renewable is no good. If we're not, if we're not putting, fo if we're not burning fossil fuel and putting carbon in the air, the Koch brothers aren't happy. If the Koch brothers aren't killing your kids, they're not happy. Trust me about that. These guys with their, with their energy and everything, look what's going on in Crimea now. You know, uh, uh, Russia's going to shut off the uh, gas fountain. Those people are going to be energy starved. You know what? If we had all the solar power and the windmills and everything there, we can, we, they could just say to the people, the Russia, hey, keep your gas. Who cares? We got solar. So I tell you, tonight we're going to show you more, you know, about the changing, the game changing solutions, and we'll show you how Fox will diss it, and then we're going to show you a new service that's put out by Media Matters, and it's called Mythopedia. That's right. Virtually anything that you see or hear on Fox TV, you can type into this website, and we'll show you. We'll show you I get all the information, and virtually anything, anytime they lie to you, you can type it in, and you can give them the old double reverse backhand bada bing bitch slap because they deserve it. And take no prisoners, guys. Take no prisoners. 
So anyway, so we're going to introduce you to Mythopedia, and then we're going to show you the five top lies about Obamacare. Because guys, don't forget, this is the last week for open enrollment. So anybody that you know that's been borderline, hey, all you got to do is go on the website. All you need to put in is how much money you make, how old you are, if you smoke or if you don't smoke, and how many people you, ha uh, you have as dependents. And it'll spit out a number. And you can pick a bronze plan, a, a, a gold plan, a silver plan, or I think even in, uh, no, in Connecticut, I don't know if you get the platinum, but, but you get the idea. And then after that, we're going to show you how the Koch brothers, our favorite guys when it comes to Obamacare, how they not only mislead you, but I mean they just out and out lie. And why? Because so it's simple. Obamacare is going to, if you make more than $250,000 a year, you're going to have to pay more for Obamacare. You know what, guys? If I was making more than $250,000 a year, I don't think I would even argue about it. But that's me. You know what I mean? I think I'm sensible. I think I'm realistic. I think I deal with facts and figures. And speaking of facts and figures, we're going to let Bill Maher give, give, give all the Republicans the business about the, the way they use language and terminology. And they're going to show you what Frank Lutz has taught them and how finally the progressives and the Democrats are finally starting to learn how to use the language to their advantage. So John, let's roll the first one. And finally, new role Democrats need to stop despairing about the gloomy midterm predictions and realize there's actually a glimmer of hope and it has to do with suicide. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> For decades now, liberals pushed the issue of assisted suicide and it got nowhere. Then they started to call it aid in dying and its approval shot up 20 points and it's now legal in five states. That's the power of language. And if they took the word dying out altogether and called it early retirement, <laughs> it would probably win over 10 more states. If they called it death by chocolate, they could get all 50. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, that success and the success the Democrats had in rebranding gay marriage as marriage equality means they have finally caught on to what Republicans learned a long time ago from their guru on words, deranged madman slash friend of the show, <laughs> Frank Luntz. Frank is the genius right-wing wordsmith who taught Republicans to, instead of saying estate tax, say death tax. Instead of saying poor people, say the takers. Instead of saying ridiculous to pay, say healthy head of natural human hair. <laughs> <laughs> and what Democrats need to do is start out luncing the Republicans on all the issues. What's the difference between drilling for oil and energy exploration? <laughs> Nothing except one sounds like something assholes do and one sounds like Indiana Jones. <laughs> healthcare reform, everyone likes that. Government takeover of healthcare. What are you, Hitler? <laughs> What's the difference between creationism and intelligent design? Not IQ points. <laughs> Being a Republican means starting with a bedrock principle like rich people shouldn't pay taxes or black people shouldn't vote. <laughs> and then figuring out how to sell it to low information voters, otherwise known as Americans. <laughs> Did I say don't tax rich people? I meant encourage the job creators. Did I say don't let black people vote? I meant clamp down on voter fraud. <laughs> Did I say bring back slavery? I meant phase out race-based freedom quotas. <laughs> Republicans are always confident they can move the needle on any issue because A, 
they know they have the right words to make the hamster hit the pedal. And B, they have the discipline with those words. Perhaps you noticed how everyone on the right universally decided at the exact same moment that Obama's weakness is what emboldened Putin to take Crimea. And that's not a matter of great minds thinking alike, because for that, you would need great minds. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's because once the word is decided on, every single Republican from the presidential contenders on down to the feces throwers on hate radio <laughs> all chant it like Rain Man over and over until it's beaten into our skulls. Now, I have no hope the Democrats will ever get that organized. But they could at least keep up the winning streak in the word game. Starting with, liberals must stop saying they believe in climate change or believe in evolution. Evolution is. It's not a matter of believing in it. I don't believe... I don't believe that water boils at 212 degrees. That's how hot it is when it happens. It's not ideology. It's soup. <laughs> But most of all, just remember, you win the word game, you win the issue. Jesus was for feeding the poor. Rename food stamps Christ coupons. <laughs> Marijuana legalization should be called creating green jobs. <laughs> Abortion is a natal do-over, and <laughs> illegal aliens are refried American. <laughs> and solar energy has always sounded way too gay for rednecks. Instead, say, invade the sun and take its oil. <laughs> It's just like he says, you know, solar, solar power is just too gay for rednecks. <laughs> right, Uncle Joe? No, no, Uncle Joe was, Uncle Joe had Solar City come out to his house, and he said to the guy from Solar City, he goes, I'm gonna have to eat some crow, and then Uncle Joe wasn't man enough to post the stuff online. He wasn't man enough to show us how much money he was going to save. You know why? Because it doesn't fit in the Republican agenda. You know? But Joe, you don't have to feel warm and fuzzy when it comes to solar power. You can feel cold and creepy like a conservative, and you could still enjoy the savings from solar. You know what I mean? So you could be cold as ice, and you could still make money. And isn't that what you capitalists want? But you couldn't admit to everybody how much you could save with solar, could you, Joe? All right, but anyway, you know, like, he, like Bill Maher was saying, it's a word game. And, you know, it's words like you believe. Like when it comes to global warming, it's not whether you believe or you don't believe. You look at the data. And the data tells you all you need to know. It's that simple. And guys, when it comes to data, there's one thing that you're going to see in the next clip. When it comes to natural, renewable solar power, you can't get any bigger than the world's largest plant. So let's take a look, finally, at the completed Ivanpah plant. John, hit it. From a distance, it looks like a shimmering blue lake in the Mojave Desert, but that mirage is really a mirror, 170,000 of them. They're called heliostats. And how much power do you get from each one? So this project will fuel 140,000 California homes. So effectively, one heliostat can power one California home. Tom Doyle is the CEO of NRG, the company heading this massive solar project. In fact, this is the largest concentrated solar thermal project in the world. Conventional solar panels capture the sun's energy, but these mirrors reflect it onto a 450-foot tall tower. Inside is a boiler, which then heats to 1,000 degrees. Water is turned into steam that powers a turbine and creates electricity. 
which will likely be sent to Los Angeles and San Francisco. We're actually displacing 400,000 tons per year of CO2 by using solar energy in lieu of fossil fuel capacity. So there's steam going up into the sky, but no CO2. You've got it. That's exactly right. The solar installation will help towards California's goal of getting one third of its electricity from renewable sources by 2020. But it's not cheap. This project costs $2.2 billion. It's privately funded by several companies, including Google, which invested $168 million. The project is backed by a $1.6 billion federal loan guarantee, and they lease the land from the government. Land that was also home to the desert tortoise, a protected species. It cost the project's backers $22 million to hire biologists, purchase conservation land, and relocate about 200 tortoises into these pens on the property. But they feel it's worth it because this type of solar plant could be replicated in the deserts in the American Southwest. So it's happening, it's real, and this really is today's technology from an energy perspective. Technology that's no longer elusive, even if it appears to be an illusion. Ben Tracy, CBS News, in the Mojave Desert. Guys, did you see what he had to say? The financing was funded by a grant from the Department of Energy. The same grant that funded the money for Solyndra. Hey, one technology works, one doesn't. But this is why the government has to get involved. You know, you can't have private industry building stuff like the Hoover Dam. Nobody can afford it. It's too risky. You know, you need to have government backing. And the government stepped up to the plate. They put the capital up. And look what's happened. And of course, you won't see this on Fox, or you'll never see the good stuff on Fox. You'll only see the bad stuff. But now let's show the CNN version. First, I think that was CBS. Now we'll see the CNN version of Ivan Poor, and then we're going to take it one step further. So, John, let's have the next clip. At first glance, it looks like an oasis in the middle of the Mojave Desert. But the Sea of Blue is actually the work of more than 170,000 mirrors each one reflecting the sun's energy onto one of three 459-foot towers. This is the largest concentrated solar thermal project in the world. The Ivanpah Solar Thermal Plant sits on 3,500 acres of desert, nestled in between the Clark Mountains and Interstate 15, near the California-Nevada border. And it's every bit as large as it's made out to be. It's actually three projects on this site, in total 392 megawatts. Uh, the project will eliminate 400,000 tons of carbon emissions. That's like taking 72,500 cars off the road. Energy says the 392 megawatts equates to enough power for 140,000 homes, or roughly the population of Pasadena, California. Now, the solar panels used at Ivanpah aren't the photovoltaic kind you might see on a rooftop. These panels follow the path of the sun throughout the day and reflect its heat onto steam generators located at the top of the towers. There are benefits to solar thermal over photovoltaic. I think the most important one is it's less disruptive to the grid because when you lose uh, sunlight, this project will slowly come offline where photovoltaics almost immediately come offline. A big project like Ivanpah comes with a hefty price tag, $2 billion and it got a sizable assist from the federal government to make it work. So the way this project was financed, um, because it's an innovative technology, it would have been very difficult to obtain bank debt. So the project received a $1.6 billion DOE loan guarantee. And if it weren't for that loan guarantee, we wouldn't be standing here today celebrating the Ivanpah project. While Ivanpah is currently the biggest solar project in terms of energy output, it's not likely to hold that title for long. Mid-American Solar is currently working on a solar plant that will output nearly one and a half times the 392 megawatts that Ivanpah generates. Jason Sanchez, CNN Money, Ivanpah, California. Guys, did you see that? Even though this is the biggest plant in the world, there's others that are being built now 
that are bigger. And I tell you, I, I didn't realize it. In, at the Ivanpah facility, they, do, they aren't using a salt solution. See, some of these plants, what they do is they heat up a salt solution, which will continue to heat up the water. So even when the sun goes down at night, they can still generate electricity. <clears throat> but I don't think the, the Ivanpah um, uh, project has that salt solution. But that's something in the future. But anyway, there you go. So you could... But, uh, you know, up until just recently, guys, we, we had to use that because we had no videos. <laughs> I mean, these videos just became uh, available recently. And you, you got to remember, I get everything off of YouTube. So if nobody puts it on, I can't use it. But um, the last part of the uh, uh, Ivan Paul we're going to show you is from the Boilermakers and the unions. Uh-oh. If there's one thing Fox hates, it's unions. So let's put a little salt in the wound and let's show them union cooperation at Ivanpah. Hit it, John. This project is pretty much the gateway to a lot more of these type of projects all through Southern Nevada, Southern California, Arizona. We're right on track, we're right on schedule. We have over 170 boiler makers on this project. Uh, it's the first time I've seen a tower design like this with a solar water boiling reactor. These boilers are up 450 feet high but they're inside out boilers. The water walls on the outside, the insulation on the inside. I call it an inside out boiler. This is inside out. The sun reflects off the mirrors all the way around the unit. It boils the water that's inside the water walls, which creates a steam, it goes into a steam turbine, and then it turns the generator. You figure this job here, we're talking approximately 350 megawatts, where a site with photovoltaic would probably put out maybe a third of that, if not, not less than that. If you were to use 90 or 100 percent of the mirrors, it would actually be too hot. It would cook the steel. I mean, that's how hot it's going to get up there. They, they want to condense as much as they can into the smallest places, less amount of real estate as possible. Yeah, no room at all. You've got all the penthouse, everything, all your crossover tubing, your headers, everything is inside of the water walls and it's 44 foot square. So everything has to fit exactly like it's supposed to on the drawing. So we have to take the time to make sure everything is prepped properly before it goes up to save any additional work that rework up on top. You know, you got guys working above you, you got guys working below you, you know, different crafts. There's so many safety uh, implications, you know, you, you can't drop anything, you got to be real careful. We have three different safety teams which are made up of all different trades. They all talk to people, they, they watch them, they see if they're working safely, if they're not, they talk to them. I have a sense of uh, teamwork, of looking out for each other of what I call being my brother's keeper. If a boiler maker saw an iron worker or a pipe fitter or electrician or whoever in an unsafe situation, they would not hesitate in preventing that from happening. We're not here as a boiler maker, an iron worker, a pipe fitter. When, when it comes to safety or anything like that, there is no stripe on our hat. We are totally focused that every person that comes to work here in the morning goes home the same way. This project will go online, uh, is scheduled to go online in November 2013, and the Boilermakers will meet that schedule. But if you think about the challenges that we've, we've done here, we've, we've met them all, you know, and we've, we've certainly couldn't have done it without the, the Boilermakers that we've had here. 
it's the quality of the boiler mixers we've got here. I, I've, and I've told this to many people. I have been with Bechtel for almost 30 years, and I have to say this is the best team that I've ever worked with. I just feel we're fortunate to be on the front edge of it and show our craftsmanship on assembling something like, something like this together. Union work all the way. I think this is our future. This is, uh, this is Boilermaker's future right here. We certainly hope that a lot of that, the, the journeyman and the foreman and the general foreman that we've now got here as a team can go with us to the next one. And to the next one, we take those skill sets and we do the next one. And that's what keeps unions working as far as my concern. I, I'm all convinced that if we uh, keep bringing these units in, jobs in on budget and on schedule, it keeps us more than competitive and, and keeps a union work where it needs to be. Guys, are you sold? I mean, you saw it. You saw the process. You saw how they do it. Are you sold? Are you buying the technology? I mean, you've seen it in action. You know they're going to be building even bigger plants. And I mean, we, we watch the living proof that this technology works in 130,000 homes in California are going to get clean, renewable energy from Ivanpah. But guess what, guys? <laughs> According to Fox News, it's no good. And why? Because anything renewable is no good. So let's see how Fox, what Fox thinks about Ivan Paw and the solar industry in general. John, hit it. Great news, people. The largest solar plant in the world is in the works right now. The bad news is it will vaporize birds, blind drivers, and flip planes. It's this complete fantasy to think at some point we're going to harness the, the power of the sun. Solar is weak and has not been very effective. The technology is not ripe. It's not ready. It's not applicable really on a mass scale. We try to compete in a market that we shouldn't be competing in, solar energy. Half the time, solar panels don't even work. The, the, half the time they do work, they produce expensive electricity. I mean, this is just lose, lose, lose for America. We can't do it here. Why does the taxpayer have to be the one footing the bill to try and see if, see if sun power, solar power works? If it comes, the market will tell us. The market says these companies are worthless. They're not responding to demand. They're providing something that doesn't work. I they want an energy policy that works, not this nonsense of supporting wind and solar. The solar industry is leading the country. It's going right down the toilet. Why are you guys all mocking this stuff? You know, you're going to run it doesn't out work. of this. You're going to run out of this dinosaur <laughs> stuff after a work. while. Did you see that, guys, where, where they said, that, where uh, uh, Bob Beckel says, why are you guys mocking this stuff? And uh, Greg Gutfeld goes, because it doesn't work. Well, that, guys, that's what they want you to think. It doesn't work. Well, if solar power and solar energy doesn't work, why would we be spending millions of dollars to put them on our sports stadiums. Millions and millions of dollars to turn these sports stadiums into solar generating plants. That's right, solar power plants while you're watching a football game. And you know what? It's not only while you're watching a game, it's all year round, all year. And guys, if you go online, if you go to Who's Telling the Truth, the only day that Mary Lou didn't generate any electricity from her solar panels up in New Fairfield was the day that it snowed. And even after it snowed, the next day she still generated electricity. So I mean, it might, because they're glass, I guess the snow slides right off. But anyway, let's take a look at these stadiums and when you see the amount of power they can generate, it's going to blow you away. So, John, hit it.
In 2011, NRG and some of the NFL's top teams started a historic partnership to create some of the most advanced alternative energy solutions. Combined, these projects currently provide 7.5 megawatts of peak power for America's football fans. FedEx Field, home of the Washington Redskins, hosts the largest solar array in the metro DC area. This project went from contract signing to installation in just three months. All this despite back-to-back -back interruptions from an earthquake and a hurricane. Here, more than 7,600 solar panels are part of a new 841 space parking facility, providing both clean energy and protection from the elements. Ten electric vehicle charging stations allow fans to charge up during the game. The ramp structure is comprised of 188 translucent and 525 conventional panels. The star of this installation is Solar Man, a 30-foot statuette of a quarterback built with thin film solar panels. Lincoln Financial Field, home of the Philadelphia Eagles, utilizes both solar and wind to produce renewable energy. 11,000 panels are installed in a robust mounting structure built to withstand extreme wind and weather conditions. Enhanced structure features for panels near fireworks launched after each touchdown ensure increased protection from the intense vibrations. 14 micro wind turbines complement the solar installation, complete with a braking system for immediate stoppage should it ever be necessary. MetLife Stadium, home to two NFL teams, the New York Jets and the New York Giants. 1,350 solar panels installed 180 feet above the ground form the NRG Solar Ring. The infinite color LED array not only displays the home team's colors, but can be custom programmed for any event. A snow jack and gutter system assisted by lasers constantly measures accumulated snow weight, alerting the system's operators when removal is necessary. It's important to send out the right message that both of our teams uh, want to do the right thing environmentally. And so I think it will enhance their experience. Plus, aesthetically, the ability to light up green or light up blue, I think is something that will be pleasing to our fans. I totally concur. Well, I mean, I think particularly the young people that are going through school now are all interested in sustainability. And this is a demonstration project for sustainability. Patriot Place, part of the New England Patriot Stadium complex and home to dozens of retailers. When you install solar panels, you can lock in your energy costs for the long term. And, and I think that's a very powerful thing. 3,000 standard and translucent panels provide 60% of the electricity for the marketplace adjacent to Gillette Stadium. An infinite color LED light system in the canopy above the pedestrian walkway provides a visually enhanced experience for the visitors below. These technologies aren't things of the future, that they actually are here today. They can create energy for your businesses or your home. Levi Stadium future home of the San Francisco 49ers. When completed, will be California's first professional sports venue to achieve net zero energy performance during home games. These five projects combined provide 7.5 megawatts of clean renewable power and will avoid the annual emission of 5,493 metric tons of carbon into the atmosphere, the equivalent of 615,000 gallons of gas. NRG, powering America's football fans. Solar is now. Guys, did you see that? Five stadiums generating 7.5 megawatts of solar power. 7.5 megawatts of solar power, but you know what? According to Fox, solar doesn't work. That's right. And guys, not my words, we're gonna show you the video and we're gonna let Fox bada bing themselves. They do it so well, they do it so consistently and they do it all the time. So, John, let the bada-binging begin. Hit up. You know, all done. Do what I can. 
incredible Fox News stories from over the weekend. Fox News getting caught straight up lying, saying in a segment where they wanted to make it seem like solar power is just not really going to get going. They started saying solar power won't work in America because it's just not sunny like in Germany. So first we have Gretchen Carlson kind of saying, hey, the industry's future doesn't look too good. Let's listen to that first, Lewis, and then we'll skip forward to really the key point. Take a listen into solar power production. Well, today the industry's future looks dim as investments into green energy are beginning now to dry up. Fox oh, she just sounds so sad. A very contrite and, and sad sounding Gretchen Carlson. Let's now go to the key point that people are just laughing hysterically at because it is just such nonsense that this expert says the following. Listen to this. Brace yourselves. Not safe for children. This type of nonsense. It's very, very damaging to children who are still forming opinions about science. Then they start to cut prices again, and then we start to throw more money. That's not a viable business what? solution. Yeah, what, was Germany, what was Germany doing correct? Are they just a smaller country that made it more They're feasible? a smaller country, and they've got lots of sun, right? right? They've got a lot more sun than we do. And the <laughs> problem is it, it's a cloudy day, and it's raining. You're not going to have it. I mean, right. this nation is, is vast and, and, and beautiful in its, um, in, in, its, uh -oh. in, in its makeup. In California, it's a great solution. Sure, right. Here on the East Coast, it's just not going to work. So you oh, my, 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 my. This is just, this, this is just incredible i mean how th this is th this is a, a channel that calls itself a news channel ladies and gentlemen of course why hasn't anyone thought of that before why wouldn't you think that some scientist somewhere would have noticed that the east coast is less sunny than central europe and therefore incapable of producing solar power just can't do it at all well let's take a look at the map and see actually what the reality is so this map here that you see um, is basically a map measuring uh, measuring sunlight and and measuring the intensity of sunlight and the the annual averages that can be collected. And as you can see on the bottom right of the image, that's Germany. And you can see from the color coding that the sunlight in Germany is very very close, slightly more than the sunlight in where Lewis Alaska. in Alaska, in Alaska. Exactly right. And if you compare most of the U.S., with the exception of what? With the exception of the, the northwest tip of the U.S., which has less sun, and it starts to go in those same directions as, uh, as Germany, we've got a ton of sun here. And, and compared, just for comparison's sake, if you look at Spain, which is on, on the uh, Iberian Peninsula in southwestern Europe, we have, in a lot of the country, actually even more sunlight than there. So it must be fun being Fox News and actually producing nonsense programming, right? Imagine sitting around and saying, how about this? We'll just say that solar power won't work here because it's just not sunny enough like it is, uh, like it is in Germany. What the hell? They'll eat it right up. And yeah. it basically happens. They will go to any length to, uh, to just keep corporate profits high, I guess. Right. I mean, that, that's really the only objective I can think of. Yeah, and uh, you know, I could just feel my IQ points dropping as I watch this. After I watch this, I actually I, I had to read some poetry to recover the two IQ points I lost from uh, from yeah. watching the story. Scour over the dictionary for a little while. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Guys, you see that? I mean, Fox News has trained liars working for them. And when you train liars can't get their lies right, you're really in trouble. And I tell you, fortunately, Media Matters, who loves to bada bing Fox, has come up with a new service called Mythopedia. Like Wikipedia. But it's Mythopedia. And guys, I'm not kidding. I'm not making this up. It's not a myth. What we're going to do is we're going to play the introductory video. And I've used it. And I mean, you can go, you know, you, you know we'll watch the video and then we'll talk about it. So, John, let's, watch, let's see what Mythopedia is all about. Welcome to Mythopedia. Mythopedia is a project of Media Matters. It's a treasure trove of conservative lies and misinformation and the facts you need to refute them. Let's get started with Mythopedia's easy to use search function. First, enter a search term. Let's say Obamacare. And there you go, a list of both lies and truths. If you want to explore one of these further, simply click see entry and voila, you're taken to a page that contains both the lie and the truth, as well as a more in-depth rebuttal with citations to back it up. You can also click on a tag to see other myths about the same subject. If you didn't see what you're looking for, 
Go back to the search bar and try broadening your search, like healthcare. And as you can see here, you have even more lies to choose from. Also, you can always click here on full list to browse through all of the lies. Finally, you can even use Mythopedia on the go with your smartphone or tablet. Not only does it have all the same great features of the website, but it also allows you to search by voice command. So the next time you're confronted with a conservative lie, get the truth at mythopedia.mediamatters.org. So guys, the next time one of your conservative Republican friends tries to give you the double reverse about anything, doesn't matter what it is, get out your phone and you can type and you can even talk into it. But I tell you, you know, this is the only way to beat these guys. And, and you have to beat them with facts and you have to beat them with the truth. And the thing is, that's why you'll, you know, that's why like whenever I'm blogging or I'm dealing with anybody that's a conservative, the first thing I say to them is, where are you getting your information from? Who's telling you this? What are your sources? And what happens is when they actually go to post their sources or look them up, most of the time I never hear from them again. Why? They probably actually read something for a change and went, uh-oh. <laughs> it's like, like that Geico commercial with the guy with the pyramids. Uh-oh. <laughs> but anyway, hey, look, let's be honest with each other. Even though Fox is bad, the, the, the Fox Institutes at Fox News are bad liars, they're consistent liars. And like I told you earlier, this is the last week for open enrollment for Obamacare. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at the top five biggest lies being promoted by the Koch brothers, the Republican Party, and the conservatives. So, John, let's see what the five biggest Obamacare lies are. Hit it. Four years have come and gone since the signing of the Affordable Care Act. In that time, there have been a whole host of lies and myths perpetuated by the right-wing media. Here are the top five. Myth number five, Obamacare will kill hundreds of thousands of jobs. Jobs are going down. They estimate 800,000 jobs we're going to lose. And they say the law will kill 800,000 jobs, perhaps more. But there's never been any evidence that this is happening. In fact, Obamacare gives people more freedom to find jobs that fit their needs and skill level. Myth number four, the Affordable Care Act funds abortions. We now have taxpayer money linked up with the termination of a fetus. Obviously an explosive issue. You now will be forced to pay a dollar a month to cover abortion on your insurance policy. Conservative opponents of the Affordable Care Act have tried many different ways to claim the law funds abortions with federal tax dollars. The truth is that Obamacare went to great lengths to make sure that doesn't happen. Myth number three, Obamacare will add to the national deficit. The president's health care overhaul will increase unfunded liabilities by more than $6 trillion over the next 75 years. Obamacare will increase the long-term federal deficit by $6.2 trillion. Every estimate from nonpartisan experts like the Congress National Budget Office have found that the law will reduce the deficit. Myth number two, Obamacare is socialized medicine. Yep, it's good old socialism. You know, pretty much raping the pocketbooks of the rich to give to the poor. I think that's socialism. The Obama budget also funds the relentless drive towards socialized medicine. But Obamacare is nothing like socialized medicine. It maintains and even grows access to insurance through private companies. And the number one myth is that health care reform creates death panels. Of course there are death panels in there. Now remember those death panels we spent so much time talking about? Well, guess what? The death panels are back. One of the most dishonest and insidious smears of Obamacare is that it will create a panel of people who will decide whether Americans are deserving of medical care. For more on conservative misinformation on the Affordable Care Act and other stories, please visit MediaMatters.org. Guys, you know, you've got the, the biggest Obamacare lies, but the thing is what, what really gets me is when they put somebody on TV and they get them to make a claim 
that is not valid and it's misleading. But I mean to the point where it's an out and out lie. And the next clip we're gonna show you is from the Young Turks. And what they've done is they've taken a commercial that the Koch brothers put on the air. They Americans for Prosperity helped fund this. All Koch, Brunny, Koch brother think tank money went into this. And what they did was they wanted to create doubt and confusion and they wanted to create hate. And why? Because it's gonna cost them money. And if rich people, the one thing rich people don't do is they don't pay for nothing. <laughs> nothing. No, no, they would, rather, they would rather spend millions of dollars to try to trick the simple folk than to actually reach into their pocket and say, you know what, I can't spend the amount of money I have anyway. What difference does it make? We put it to some good use. Now, what do the Koch brothers do? They spend their money on, I think it was uh, 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 Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Hall or you know the, the Met. They build these fancy opera houses, you know, for the rich elite. And what about the poor people? Eh, the hell with them, you know. The only thing they want to do for poor people is put carbon in the air, make their lives miserable. All right. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna look at some hard breaking anti-Obamacare bull that's been put out by the Koch brothers, and you could see how deceptive and, and dishonest they are. So John, roll the hate, babe. So the Koch brothers are spending $30 million uh, against Democratic uh, candidates across the country, uh, saying, oh my God, they voted for Obamacare, and Obamacare is devastating people. This poor woman, for example, Julie Boonstra, uh, she's, uh, had leukemia, she was diagnosed with it five years ago, and Obamacare could cost her her life. I'm gonna show you the ad they ran in a second, and then I'll give you the reality behind it. Uh, they're running this ad against Democratic U.S. Representative Gary Peters. Uh, he voted for the Affordable Care Act, and they're saying, can you believe he did that? All right, first, let's show you this gut-wrenching ad. My name is Julie Boonstra, and five years ago, I was diagnosed with leukemia. I found out that I only have a 20% chance of surviving. I found this wonderful doctor and a great health care plan. I was doing fairly well, fighting the cancer, fighting the leukemia. And then I received the letter. My insurance was canceled because of Obamacare. Now the out-of-pocket costs are so high, it's unaffordable. If I do not receive my medication, I will die. I believed the president. I believed I could keep my health insurance plan. I feel lied to. It's heartbreaking for me. Congressman Peters, your decision to vote for Obamacare jeopardized my health. It is time to listen to me. It is time to listen to the other American citizens out there who are hurting. This is serious. It's not a game. Congressman Peters, Obamacare is not the answer. Oh, my God. Obamacare might have kill that poor woman. Well, if you saw that ad, I mean, how are you not just enraged at what President Obama has done with Congressman Peters voting for that? They took her insurance away, and now it's, it's not affordable for her. She might die. They, they literally said that in the ad. Now, this is pretty serious. I mean, she was diagnosed with leukemia again five years ago. So I assume I have pretty good information if we're making fun of this ad, and I do. So the Detroit News looked into it, and it turns out, of course, as always, it's a total and utter lie. She uh, has Blue Cross Premier Gold health care plan now, okay? And they asked her about it, by the way. We'll get to her quotes in a second. Under her old plan that she loved so much, the minimum that she would pay is $13,200 a year. Now, under the new plan, uh, she pays less per month, but has a higher deductible. But the maximum she could pay in a given year is $11,952. So at a bare minimum, she would be saving $1,200, getting the same treatment or better, saving $1,200 under Obamacare. Um, he ripped the plan out of my hands and gave me a better, cheaper plan. How could he do that? 
they asked her about it. She said, I don't know, maybe I can't get some prescriptions or something. Then they go and talk to her insurance plan. They're like, no, she has full range of all prescriptions. And they, even the insurance company's like, we wish people would educate themselves a little bit better so we can serve them better. <laughs> when confronted with all the facts, Boonstrup, whose husband, ex-husband, I should say, coincidentally happens to be a, an important Republican in Michigan who was um, chair of the Washington uh, or Washington, sorry, County GOP, and uh, that's the worst pronunciation of that county in American history, and, uh, and uh, appointed by Governor Rick Snyder, a Republican, to the Michigan Court of Appeals in 2012, just a wild coincidence, I'm sure, uh, since she's never been involved in politics before, but they ask her, hey, wait a minute, now the facts say that in fact uh, you're getting a better plan and it's cheaper. She said, quote, I personally do not believe that. Well, okay, all right, I don't know what that means. And so when her insurance says, no, no, but it's absolutely true, here's your insurance and here's the fact, she says, quote, can't be true. Except, Julie, it is true. See, but that's Obama derangement syndrome, that when faced with reality, you refuse to accept reality, because you hate Obama so much, he must be killing you, even if he's delivering better insurance for you and He's delivering it in a cheaper way. No, it can't be true, can't be true. They're spending $30 million at a bare minimum on campaigns that are gonna be decided in, in November, right? <laughs> They're already spending that kind of money today, the Koch brothers are, Americans for Prosperity, all across the country with lie after lie after lie. Almost every single instance that Fox News, the Koch brothers, or the Republican Party has put out there of someone who was destroyed, victimized by Obamacare, every one of them has been proven to be false. They can't find a single instance where somebody was devastated by Obamacare, and each one turns out to be a lie. Guys, you see that? I mean, now, he said her husband works for the GOP. So, because your husband works for a political party, you have to lie for that party? I mean, I said to, to Joey's friend uh, on his blog, uh, uh, Things to Ponder, would you cut your nose off to spite your face? You know, if your kid was sick, would you sign up for Obamacare? Or do you hate the president that much that you'd rather see your kid get sick? This is the way these people think. This is why he gets so upset. And it's a shame. I mean, but this is what we live with. And we wanted to show you a clip with um, Harry Reid. And he said something on the floor of the Senate about the Koch brothers. And you know what? Maybe next week we can start off by, you know, really giving the Koch brothers the bada bing because there's so much to bada bing them about. They don't stop. You know, they want to destroy America. They want to turn everybody into haters, deniers, and liars. And you got guys like this Joey, who's the simple folk. They buy it all the time. We'll see you next week, guys. Take care.